Okay, uh, my name is Chris Bean. I'm with the AWR group of National Instruments. And this morning I'm going to be talking about load pole and how load pole data can be used in the design of output stages for power amplifiers. And more specifically, how the new swept load pole data files can be used in our software for uh, designing commercial base station power amps. Okay, so what is load pole? Very simple but powerful concept. It simply means uh, sweeping the load or source impedance presented to an active device and measuring its performance. Uh, performance contours are plotted on a Smith chart and that shows the designer how changing the impedances impacts the, device, the device's performance. It's been used for many years in RF circuit design flows, particularly for high power applications such as base station TAs. Uh, newer low pole file formats include uh, swept data, for instance, input power, temperature, bias. Uh, what we see in the industry right now is people are sweeping, sweeping predominantly input power. So when we've architected the latest version of our software, we've done that with the emphasis on input power sweeps, where you can sweep anything you want, anything can be a swept variable, but keep in mind that input power is what we see in the, in the industry right now. So a traditional, or I should say an ideal, traditional design flow uh, typically involves a uh, nonlinear model for your device. And typically it involves load pulling that model in your uh, circuit design software of choice. And from that data, you create your input and output matching networks, and then you plot the performance criteria that are important to you for your design. And from that point, you just tweak your matching networks until you meet all your design goals, or at least optimize things to the fullest uh, extent possible. Uh, a couple issues with this. One is just the uh, overall accuracy of models. Uh, a lot of people that are much smarter than I am are working very hard to make more and more accurate nonlinear models, but it's so difficult to have an accurate nonlinear model that is accurate over all operating conditions, uh, bias, temperature, uh, frequency, what have you. So that's one issue. Uh, above and beyond that is just the simple availability of models. If you're in the commercial base station design business, you're uh, under a lot of time pressure and the device vendors are pushing out their samples to you before the models are often even available. So it's just having a model. So to circumvent that, um, PA designers have started to design their matching networks and associated circuitry right from the load pole data. Uh, that has some advantages, one of which is that whole process is often within the control of the design group, design group itself rather than relying on a third party uh, to develop models and get them out to you. Challenge for EDA companies like us, like AWR, is to provide a useful methodology in our software to interact and use the data. Our philosophy is to make it easy to deal with rich or dense data sets and let designers essentially slice and dice the data the way they need to once it's imported into our software. And again, our focus is on uh, swept power local data. So uh, you're going to hear this a couple times probably in the next 10 minutes, but take lots of data and rely on the post-processing in our tool. Um, <clears throat> Historically, meaning for many, many years, uh, single sweep point files uh, like MORI LP and SP files and Focus Microwave LPD files have been supported in Microwave Office. Uh, with version 12, which is due out uh, next month in June, we'll be supporting uh, the multi-dimensional type files which have uh, swept data. Uh, some examples of that are MORI SPL, CST, and Focus LPC. And for us, uh, the more data, the better, essentially. It focuses on seamless, intuitive uh, post-processing. So lots of uh, gamma points, lots of frequency points, power steps, et cetera, uh, dense data sets. So some examples of what you can do with uh, the new uh, local file formats in our software. Uh, on the left here is a rectangular graph of the input power versus the index. Uh, so that's all this index of the uh, input power uh, points. We have a marker which points to a uh, specific input power and we're plotting the contours for that power. Move the marker and you get uh, another set of contours 
uh, which cor correspond to that, that power level. And one more time, move the marker, get another set of contours. So that's something you couldn't do, obviously, with uh, the single point older uh, local files. Uh, so conversely, instead of uh, choosing an input power level and plotting contours, you can choose a gamma point or an impedance and plot swept data. So here we're picking a gamma point out of the uh, locus of impedances that are in the, the local file. And just for this example, we plot uh, gain compression curves. So the grayed out traces there, that's the uh, gain compression curves for all the gamma points in the file. And then the dark blue trace is the one which corresponds to the uh, one that we've selected with the marker. Similarly, move the marker to another gamma point and our gain compression curve changes to update uh, that impedance. So what does, uh, what would a typical design flow now uh, look like now that you have this capability uh, with the new files? So um, similar to the last slide, we're plotting the uh, impedance points in, uh, from the local file we've imported. This is a 2.1 gigahertz, roughly 80 watt uh, PA, uh, sorry, LDMOS device. And we pick a gamma point, and we're going to plot uh, essentially AM to AM, or gain compression curve for three frequencies that are in the file. And we're also going to plot a uh, specific uh, power capability. I just pick the 2 dB gain compression point here. And we're also going to plot the AM to, to PM curves. And now we can move the, the marker around, choose different gamma points, and parse through uh, what I think of as the performance space of the device and assess the trade-offs as we go. So another impedance point, and you automatically get a new set of curves corresponding to that load impedance. Another set of AM to AM, AM to PM curves, and another uh, 2 dB power point. And you can do this until you reach uh, what you consider your optimum uh, desired impedance for your design goals. So here uh, we've chosen another uh, gamma point and we've got a very flat gain compression, very flat AM to AM, also flat AM to PM, and our uh, TDB power is now close to uh, 100 watts. So another thing that uh, is, is possible now with um, the updated capability, this is what we, we call uh, an overlap contour. So here we've got uh, just the general uh, local contours for power and PAE. And same data, same uh, power level, we're just plotting uh, specific contours. So we picked uh, 50 dBm power capability and 70% PAE. And then the new measurement uh, we have is called an overlap contour. So this, if I go back, and fourth, it's just you can see that's the tiny locus of impedances where we're meeting both uh, design criteria, both 50 dBm power and 70% PAE. So if you're a base station PA designer, you're never designing for just one target. It's always multiple uh, performance criteria you're trying to meet simultaneously. And this type of measurement lets the designer uh, narrow in very quickly on uh, those performance criteria. What's the tiny locus of impedances where I reach both criteria simultaneously. And again, we call this an overlap contour. Um, another point uh, to make is that just because we're uh, sweeping input power, it doesn't mean you are uh, constrained to make all your measurements based on input power. Uh, you don't have to, um, if you're interested in plotting things or designing, of course, as most people do in terms of output power, uh, you don't have to have your local system uh, servo to specific output power levels. Uh, you can just take input power sweeps and then use the capability in our software um, to pick uh, output power based point and plot data from there. So here I've got uh, three curves of the actual gain compression value. So we're getting up to uh, about 60 dB gain compression at three frequencies. I pick the center band, 2.14 gigahertz, and I pick my 3 dB compression point. And then I can plot my contours for whatever, uh, whatever uh, measurements are in the, uh, in the file are available. And here we've stuck with the uh, PAE and output power capability contours. 
Um, another thing we can do now, we can uh, optimize our matching networks uh, directly from the load pool data itself. So here we plotted uh, several performance criteria, PAE again, gain compression, output power, and uh, gain. And we can now tune our matching networks, however, what do you, whatever you've set up uh, to tune, uh, lumped element values, uh, microstrip widths and lengths, what have you. And we can tune directly based on those performance criteria. And we get a matching network. We can use the optimization capability. Uh, instead of tuning anything you can tune, you can optimize and vice versa. So the, the bars there are the uh, goals for the optimizer. We set some goals, hit the optimization button to uh, go ahead and optimize the matching network to meet those performance goals, and we get a certain matching network. Uh, change the goals, um, again, based on your design or trying to optimize your design based on your targets. Uh, optimize again, and you get another matching network. So that we think is a very powerful sort of concept is uh, optimizing directly from the performance uh, right from the local data file itself. Uh, so in summary, uh, load pool will continue to be a very uh, integral in design flow for microwave and RF for the foreseeable future. Uh, again, it's gone back uh, several decades. So um, the new swept format files and EDA vendors updating their capabilities has um, done nothing but increase the use of load pool uh, recently. Again, um, if you're doing an empirical based design, you have control over things, you can go back and tell your local group to uh, take more data points or uh, different gamma points, different power levels. It's a lot more uh, closed loop, a lot quicker feedback, but, uh, rather than waiting on nonlinear device models to be created. Uh, collection of a rich data set uh, can shorten design cycles, uh, particularly again with uh, swept input power. Now, if you see anybody in the industry or using some other sweep rather than input power, please stop by and, and let us know. We'd be interested to, to hear that. And finally, uh, NI AWR design environment allows enough flexibility in interacting with the load pool data that uh, users can come up with their own use models. So we talk to these different design groups and they tend to do things a, a little bit differently. Some people design to uh, the contours, some people plot performance data on rectangular graphs and design that way. Uh, our philosophy is to keep things uh, flexible enough that you can do whatever is best for you and even come up with new, new uh, use models uh, for the data. Uh, so finally, um, we're now National Instruments, so look for the National Instruments banner. Um, some of this is difficult to give justice to in the PowerPoint slides, but it, it's really uh, easy to see in the, uh, in the software. And we'd love to uh, have, have you stop by and, and give you a demo.